Waist level viewfinders on point and shoots. Are they any good or are they just a gimmick that help camera companies sell more cameras? Now I've been fascinated by super scopes or waist level viewfinders on point and shoots ever since I visited Graham from the Sunny 16 podcast in 2019. We were rifling through a box of cameras and all of a sudden he just pulls out this Yashka T4 or T5 and it has this super scope. I was kind of fascinated by it. I'd never seen one before. It looks tiny and kind of useless, but at the same time, I thought someday I've got to try this out for myself. Now there's only a handful of compact point and shoot cameras that actually have waist level viewfinders. Calling them waist level viewfinders might be a little bit over the top. They all have different names. So here's what each company calls them. On the Yashka T4D, it's called the Super Scope. On the Yashka T3D and the Yashka TwinTech, it's called the NA scope, which stands for a new angle. Now on the Canon SureShot Ace here, this is the only Canon point and shoot camera with one of these scopes on, and it's not actually labeled on the camera. The only way that I know what it's called is because I downloaded the manual, and in the manual there's this lovely page here with the Wish version of Princess Diana, and our Wish Princess Diana is holding the camera here on the ground, upside down and at waist level, and they refer to it as the Easy Viewer. It sounds like a Phil Collins song, doesn't it? Got an easy viewer. I won't do any more singing, I promise. So I loaded up a roll of Fuji C200 in the Canon Shaw Shot Ace, and I got out there around Brisbane, every single shot using the Super Scope or the Easy Viewer Scope as it's called, and I wanted to see what the results were like, and I'm gonna talk you through them right now. So the first shot is Montezuma's at Kapalabar, a place I've featured before. It's kind of hard to line it up to get to Horizon Street. And as you can see from this first shot, oh geez, I don't know, that's not a great job, is it really? It's quite significantly uh, not level at all. I think the colors look fantastic and I really like the lens on this camera. But yeah, in terms of being straight, not a great job. The next one was in winter and they had these lovely autumnal leaves and I'm looking up towards the tree here so it's probably a bit of an easier assignment. This one looks great, the colours look fantastic, I love those yellows and browns and the blue of the sky. Much easier assignment because there's no horizon to sort of level up. So I think this one is a pass. Now we're looking at the car in front of the tree with all the leaves and I'm kind of struggling here to try and get some footage for you looking down through the easy viewer scope but once again I'm lining everything up and it's kind of hard to press the shutter with your phone in one hand and the camera in the other keeping everything still but here is the finished photo and I think it's okay it's, again it's hard to see the horizon here but overall I think that one is a pass as well. Now we're looking at leaves on the ground. I'm sorry for the B-roll footage of my crotch there, uh, but you can see my sneakers as well, don't they look nice? And we're looking down at these leaves on the ground and here is the photo. I think it did okay there. Once again, it would have been easier to use the viewfinder, but I think the easy viewer scope at waist level did an okay job in terms of that one. This one's at the seaside by Wynnum, and so we've got a horizon here. I kind of struggled with this one, but I tried my best. Here is the finished shot. It's a bit of a shocker, uh, completely skewed, but what can you do? I, I tried my best there, guys. Sorry, that one's a fail. This next one is a mystery. I don't know where this building is. I think it's too tall to be any buildings too local to where I live, but I can't think where I've been. But in terms of the photo itself, this one is an easy pass. There's no horizon to line up. The easy viewer scope has done a fine job there. I mean, it would have been easier to use the viewfinder, but anyway, that one's a pass. We're at Kapalabar again, and there's some random building. I like the wispy clouds in the background here. And the finished shot isn't too bad. I mean, I think it looks okay. Again, there's no horizon. I think this is definitely wonky. I'm gonna give it a pass though, because there's no horizon. And there's a cool bird there on the left-hand side of the frame. The next shot was taken at a local tennis court and I put the lens of the camera through the fence, or at least I thought I did. Look at this, not only is it not straight, you can also see some of the wire there in the shot. So this is not my finest hour, guys. I usually do really well at these kind of scenes with other cameras. This one was a fail. If you're enjoying this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, and I would love it if you tap that red button and subscribe to Matt Loves Cameras. And if you love my content, you can also buy me a coffee. There's information on how to do that in the video description, and I give my coffee donation people a shout out in my videos. For the last few images, I have no B-roll footage, so we're just looking at the images here. This one's at Kapalabar. I really love the colors here. This could be corrected pretty easily in Lightroom or Photoshop. It's not too bad, but I think overall we've got to give this one a fail. 
The next one here is a backyard of an abandoned house and there's a beautiful hills hoist there with some young magpies I think they were and they didn't dive bomb me so that's always a plus. I'm going to give this one a fail because it's just too unlevel, it's just too wonky that one. Onto the next shot and we have these beautiful palm trees at Kapalaba and you can see the moon in the top left of the image there. I really like this one. I think the, the tree trunks look sort of straight here to, in terms of the frame. So I'm going to give myself a check mark, a big pass for that one. This next one, not only is it wonky, the flash went off as well, which really embarrassed me because there are people having a drink outside and I wanted to remain stealthy. So this one is a big fail. The flash went off, it's wonky. Not a great shot there of the Grand View Hotel in Cleveland, big fail. And the last one is here at Wynnum. This one's turned out pretty good. Like the horizon looks pretty, well, there's no horizon, but there's a building there and the roof looks pretty straight. Colors there look quite nice. You know, this Fuji Color C200, a little bit overexposed perhaps. Uh, the camera's, you know, a bit more exposure than needed. But look, I think that's a really nice shot and that is a pass. So there you go, there's the walkthrough of the highlights of the roll of film that I shot on my Canon SureShot Ace using the Easy Viewer Scope. They were not very good, were they? I take much better, much more level pictures when I'm actually using the viewfinder on cameras. Typically when I'm using a viewfinder on a compact point and shoot, you know, we, we're kind of spoiled these days with digital cameras because they've got a horizon level as you're looking through the viewfinder. With film cameras, you're not quite that lucky, but still I reckon I get maybe, you know, nine out of 10 shots on my point and shoots with a pretty level horizon, maybe not perfect, but if it's off, it's, it's off by such a small amount you don't even notice. So probably only about one in 10 I need to correct and straighten in Lightroom. However, with the Easy Viewer on the Canon SureShot Ace, it was a bit of a disaster. I mean, these, these photos are totally all over the shop. Um, they're pretty bad in terms of their, well, I wouldn't say they're bad in terms of their composition, it's just mainly the level. I couldn't work out how to make sure that the horizons were level and everything was straight. It was a bit of a nightmare. I'm sure it's the kind of thing that after a while you kind of get better at, just like, you know, framing through a TLR or something like that. But for me, I think, look, it's a fun and interesting feature. In terms of being useful, I don't think it's useful at all. I think it's just a bit of a fun gimmick that attracts you to buying the camera in the first place. Have you used a super scope or waist level viewfinder on a compact point and shoot camera? I would love to hear your thoughts. Is it a gimmick or is it a gift for photographers? Let me know.